Hello and welcome to the Linux Lads. Um, as usual, I'm Shane. I'm Connor. And I'm Mike. And uh, we have with us today a very special guest. Um, we have Adam. Adam, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Very special, but uh, I'm Adam Pig. Uh, and I uh, contribute to the Selfish Project, porting Selfish to devices. Great to have you on. Um, it's, it's brilliant because uh, mobile Linux, as we all know, is... The, the big thing nowadays and that's where all the sexy stuff is coming from is mobile Linux. <laughs> First of all, like how did you get started in in all this basically? Probably around 2010, 2011, um, I was um, a K Office contributor uh, and I worked on the Kexi database. And then from that, there was a Nokia representative got in touch and he was interested in kind of porting that to the N900. Uh, so he sent me an N900 and I played with that and did some app development there. Then that moved on to the uh, N9, the, the Mego devices, the N950 uh, and the N9. Uh, and I got hold of some of them and did some development there. Then in, I think 2011, uh, Nokia switched to Windows Mobile. Uh, which kind of changed everything. So then from there, I moved to BlackBerry development because they had a Qt-based operating system in, in BlackBerry 10. Then Yola came onto the market with the, 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 the Yola phone. Um, and, and I moved back to, to, to that, to, to Sailfish. Just when you're speaking there, just talking about the, the N9 Loads of people lusted after that phone at the time. The, the user <laughs> interface was just it, it, like I. I remember it was it N Gadget. It was some a professional um, uh, device reviewer website. I think it actually might have been N Gadget. I might be remembering correctly. That said, that the icons almost seemed to afloat above the screen because of the screen kind of curved a bit. And I know I know curved displays are all in vogue these days, but at the time it was just it was like they're saying it was, it's like a, a thin film of water on top of the on top of the phone. It was almost like yeah, uh, there were several people kind of lusted after that phone. It also it also had the always on display where the I think it was low power, so the, it was AMOLED. And it could show the time uh, when the screen was off. Did you say that they wanted you to port K Office onto the phone? Uh, no, they, so I think I started with developing a mobile version of the Kexi database uh, using a, a kind of a, a different interface for the N900, uh, and that, that, that's what got me into the whole mobile area. So that would be like having a Microsoft Access on a phone. Yeah, and we got we got some we got some way, and there's there's still code around, but it it never really greatly took off. But we did have ideas, and we did have code floating around. So, what projects are you currently working on? Currently, I'm uh, assisting in porting Sailfish to the Pinephone, the Volaphone, the um. FX Tech Pro One, and um, and I still look after my older um, Xiaomi Redmi Note Four, cheap cheap phone. Yeah, uh, I was I was genuinely very tempted um, by the it, it was the is it the X Pro One? That's the Pro, Pro One X. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I was I was legitimately very tempted by that, particularly when it was still in its Indiegogo price, and it's especially so. Like I almost pulled the trigger once I found out that uh, XDA had their own uh, exclusive version with their own unique link, and that like uh, got you got slightly better hardware for like or something like it was really good price. No, it was it wasn't. It was the I think it was the higher up spec model but you got it for even more reduced than it was even on Indiegogo yeah I, th I think that the, the, that goes up to about 128 gig I think Does that... yeah it was, it, it was I think it was something like that uh, very nearly pulled the trigger on that but uh, <laughs> I think I, I just couldn't justify it I couldn't afford it at the time to be spending that much money but yeah a very very compelling device as I said it was I was almost 
pull the trigger on it myself. And that's that's how I kind of got into porting, really. Uh, I could never justify buying a phone because like my phone always worked, but I, I wanted to have this this sailfish phone and, and, and I read that there were people porting it to their own phones. So I thought, well, I may as well give it a shot. And what, what, what kind of attracted you to sailfish out of uh, all possible OSs? Because, well, be, being a, a KDE, QT, C++ background, the whole, the whole sailfish uh, continuation from Nokia use, using, uh, using Qt was, was what attracted me there. Sailfish continued on for the whole Mego project, didn't it? Yeah. I know uh, Sailfish has some proprietary blobs in it, or um, in especially in the UI layer. Um, there's, is it, is it Nemo OS? Is the one that's supposed to be completely uh, open source? It, it is. There's the Nemo project, which uh, uses a lot of the same components and, and source code from the common base of everything, which was called Mer. Um, so, the, so, so at, at the it used to be at the base there was Mer, then there was Nemo, which was completely free, and Sailfish, which I like to think of it as mostly free with some extra proprietary bits. So the way I imagine this kind of works, and I'm, I've never tried anything like this, you basically have a phone and you have some kind of a base sailfish uh, image or source code and then you have to do some magic and uh, then sailfish is running on the phone what is the kind of magic in the between it generally helps if the phone has um, a lineage port so uh, if, if there's already an open source build of android for the phone that's a great help because uh, then you've got the kernel sources and you can make any changes and it's quite easy, and then the, all the builds are set up for you. Um, and then there's there's a guide which uh, Jolla provide, uh, and it's it's literally step by step tells you which repositories to check out, what changes to make. Uh, all the build commands are there, and you just you run a build, and at the end you've got an image, and you flash it, and you hope it works. And if it doesn't, you start debugging. And do you do you use Selfish like like as your daily driver? Do you do you are constantly on it? My my daily driver is the Pro One, sort of X. This isn't a proper Pro One X. It's a Pro One in an X case. All right. I believe this is this one's kind of unique. So you not you're not missing any any kind of Android capabilities or anything else that you would get from uh, like one of the two major um, phone. OS providers. I maybe do deliberately suffer. I mean, especially with banking, I, I do. I, I, I guess I go the uh, go to the effort of not using Android, just uh, and and that causes some pain with with banking. I, I, my kids seem to find it a lot easier to transfer money and things than I do. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's always what the, the two examples that we always quote on this show why we have to stick with Android or or why we stick with Android or uh, or iOS is uh banking apps and uh chat apps because, you know. Yeah, cuz everybody uses WhatsApp. Hopefully it will maybe change soon. <laughs> In relation to WhatsApp, uh, I've heard for the uh Ubuntu Touch or Ubi ports side of things and uh uh, it would be and presumably be applicable to uh, Sailfish if you didn't have the WhatsApp version uh, or the um, Android version of of, uh, of uh, WhatsApp running on on the official of supported uh, Yolo devices is that there's they just have the web UI put into an app form, but that relies on the another uh, Android phone. Being so, they effectively say that they they just have uh, an Android phone acting like a, a server and just put it in a drawer somewhere, and then they can just use the the app just like the the web interface, which is kind of a, a hack workaround of us. I mean, the, the, there's been a video posted this week of somebody running uh, Spotify in Anbox on the Pine phone on uh, Mobian, uh, so. If it can, if it can do that, then it can run WhatsApp too. 
uh, I, I've no doubt that there'll be um, people of, or quite enterprising and people are quite smart they'll probably they'll, come, they'll work around the, the WhatsApp limitation but the annoying one is definitely the banking applications because uh, banking applications um, seem to do all of their multi-factor through their own application so, so their own in-house application which I suppose from their point of view they're like well it's for security we do it through our own application there where we therefore we can verify our own application but uh, if only there was kind of an, an open standard that they would all trust and then you could just use that I mean um, all of my multi-factor that I do for work um, or, or anything like that um, work and personal are actually in the both app both uh, in the same app and it's uh, Authy on Android I don't know if anyone uh, uses it but uh, I just opened it and I have uh, Discord MFA my work MFA Humble Bundle <laughs> that kind of thing so they're all in one so yeah if if all of those can decide on a standard then why can't the banking applications it used to work quite well through through web interfaces that's only recently started changing when they basically started taking that away on the mobile phones that you can't no longer use just the web. Yeah, it's a shame, it's a shame that they deliberately disable web access from a mobile browser. There's a bank, bank that I use and there is a web UI. You can log into their website, but all it will handle off all of its... Uh, uh, authorization to their uh, mobile application. So here I am on my web UI and I say I don't know, I want to transfer uh, 50 euro to Mike. Mike, uh, Mike Mike is getting a generous gift from me or whatever uh, <laughs> it will say okay, we'll refer to your, your phone please put in your PIN or please put in or unlock with your fingerprint or something like that I'm like, I'm, I'm here and I've like, I'm settled down in front of my PC, why can't I just do everything on my PC? <laughs> If you'd like to get in touch with the Linux lads with any questions, feedback, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, uh, then we'd love to hear from you. Um, we have some handy-dandy redirect links on our domain, so you can find us on linuxlads.com forward slash Twitter, forward slash Mastodon, or forward slash Telegram. You can also email us on show at linuxlads.com. We also have a pretty active gaming channel, which is currently by invitation only, but we could possibly open that up to the public in future if there's demand for it. Um, just shout us out on Telegram if you want to join that or any other social, really. But the chat is on Telegram, just so you know. Um, you can join our Steam community as well, so you can see when everybody is online and what games we're playing at the moment. Um, just search for Linux Lads, doc or <laughs> just search for Linux Lads there, or, or check the show notes for the link. Um, you can also find all of our episodes on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, or subscribe directly to our RSS feed in your favorite podcatcher. Uh, so Adam, you said that you said that you are an old. We take it just maybe for a little while, uh, away from the from the mobile development kind of thing, back to a bit more Linux. So you said you are an uh, Qt uh, KDE C plus plus guy. Uh, you're probably aware of the latest development with Qt where they decided that uh, the state, the, what do they call it, the LTS version is going proprietary only and that uh, that uh, uh, if you want any, if you want any updates uh, to the LTS version, you have to pay them for it. And what's left is the Qt6 version, which is not half as ready as uh, as the Qt five dot fifteen or whatever it was, what are your thoughts on uh, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I, I don't have I have looked into it, but I don't really have a massive opinion. I think if it was bad enough, or if, if the situation was deemed dire enough that there had to be a fork, then KDE could manage that because they have the agreement in place already, I believe. Uh, with Q, with, with the, there's a foundation, I believe, that uh, allows them to create a fork. Um, but I haven't heard anyone talk about that for the last, well, at least a couple of weeks. And do you still develop, except for your porting for the phones? Do you still develop any? Do you still develop any kind of like uh, KD applications, or you're still involved in the side of things? Um, not so much KD applications anymore. I, I do still look after some of the libraries and I worked on for the database side. 
but I have been doing a, a lot more mobile apps lately. Um, specifically, as it's one of my mobile apps, there's been requests for me to port it to from Sailfish to uh, other mobile phones, uh, which is nice. Um, and that's a, that's a watch interface app, you know, like uh, for, for your smartwatch. Uh, for the the pine time, uh, is it? The, uh, the, yeah, it does support the pine time and the uh, my band type devices, the uh, a mouse fit devices. Just as you're just speaking about uh, QT development or anything like that, um, have you looked into Plasma Mobile at all? Yeah, that's um, so. I've ported my uh, application from Sailfish to the Kirigami components, which allows it to run on Plasma Mobile. So there's there's people running on Plasma Mobile there, uh, and I do have a spare Pine phone. And when I get five minutes, it is my intention to run Plasma on that one. You have a spare Pine phone. Uh, how many Pine phones have you got? I've got. A, <laughs> I've got a. I've, I think I've got like four or so. Wow! I've got the I've got the original development board. Um, because I mean Pine Pine are great. They 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 look after the 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 community by just sending them stuff. So I've got the development board for the phone. I've got the early Braveheart phone. I've got the one after that. And I think I've got two of the post-market edition ones. <laughs> Do you ever carry it with you, like, everywhere? You take all of them and then you just go to the... Well, not these days anyway, but you just imagine yourself going to the bar and just pulling them out all on the bar in front of you and just randomly playing with them. It would be mm. funny. Kind of... <laughs> so um, we actually got a question on Twitter, which we thought would be uh, a, good one, a good one for yourself, Adam. Um so uh, someone asks, do you think we'll see mainstream smartphone manufacturers adopt Linux on the mobile? I don't mean Android. I mean full-fledged mobile Linux distributions. And that's from uh, Cal on Twitter. We'll put a link to the tweet in the show notes. I don't know, to be honest. I'd like to think so. I think there's there's enough functionality for some people. But there's, there's, clearly, there's clearly two market winners. So whether or not the... Whether or not there's there's any scope there for another party. Yola's clearly still still trying, um, but they've had to move into just the software side because uh, the the hardware side didn't go that great. So they just sell licenses for Sony phones now. Just when you're talking about the the two big ones, they're the only one that has even tried to be a third one is. Uh, is KaiOS and that's completely separate but uh, I think that's for feature phones isn't it that the, the the new Nokia 3310 is is running that and I think there is like WhatsApp ports and things like that for it but correct me if I'm wrong isn't is that HTML I don't I think that's completely separate isn't it it's 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 basically like the old Firefox OS and it's half a between half half between a feature phone and a smartphone it's like a dumb smartphone or a smart feature phone uh, and yeah, yeah they, it, it has got its uses, uh, but uh, I think I don't know. I would like to see uh, Linux on the phone, but I don't think I'd be able to use it unless it's like on par with what what I actually use the phone for. And it's probably true for about many people. Um, do you, Adam? Do you still do? You, so I assume you use KDE. What what kind of a distro setup is your? Where do you, where do you find yourself at home if you have a Linux home? Yeah, so I'm running Plasma, uh, OpenSys Tumbleweed with Plasma and Latte Doc. With uh, it's, it's kind of it is I suppose it is a Mac kind of layout with a bar across the top and a bar across the bottom. Yeah, that's pretty much what I have here. Do you also change the dash uh, the kickoff menu or whatever it's called to the to the dashboard with uh, you know to the full screen launcher where you can just type in? No, no. Why do you prefer? Do you so? Would you say that you prefer KD or to any other desktop environment, or um, and if you do, then why? To be honest, I've never been tempted to use another desktop. I've I think I've I started using KDE when I was at university, and that was oh Christ, 
22 years ago. Um, so I think if I've been using it that long, I'm probably going to stick with it. Is there any, is there so, is there something that you really really like about it, uh, and something that you don't like as much? Uh, I, do, I, I I know it's contentious, but I like the configurability. I like that I can make it do what I want it to do. Uh, yeah, it, it, that's it's a mixed bag because um, some would argue that that's not necessarily new user friendly, and I think in the uh, they've been working on that and kind of. Um, making things more discoverable with a in their settings menu or a settings area, uh, like being able to search for things and so on, rather than just endless and endless lists of you can do everything, you can change everything. But uh, it's sometimes it can be a bit of information overload. I do remember seeing some settings in KDE when I was using it briefly recently and thinking, Jesus, I've never seen that as a setting in anything else. Like, but but I was, I saw it made sense to me though, and I, I um, I was I was very, I appreciated that that feature was there. I was like, that's brilliant. I've never seen any other OS anywhere do that, any type of software, desktop manager, blah blah. No, nope. <laughs> desktop manager, desktop environment, OS, etc. Like, uh, so it does have some very thoughtful inclusions. KDE, you can say that. <laughs> Um, Adam, what is your kind of development setup? Uh, do, do you use uh, do you use any specific editors, IDs, that kind of thing? Uh, I kind of float between, depending on what I'm doing. I'll either use um, Kit if it's just simple text editing, Cute uh, Creator. I'll use for app development quite a lot, and uh, I've been using K Develop a lot recently as well. Doing the uh, doing the Pine time firmware. Um, so I think that's a nice place to wrap it up. Um, Adam, do you have any? Uh, do you have a website or any socials you'd like us to like people to know? Uh, you can get me as uh, Adam Pig on Twitter or Telegram. Excellent. Is that one or two G's? Uh, two G's. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> giving you the opportunity there. Um, so. Uh, yeah, I just have to say thanks for coming on. A uh, very informative uh, episode, and and I know a lot of people are very interested in this this area, like mobile Linux. Um, it's the new Linux. Is it the year of the Linux desktop? Is it the year of Linux on mobile? That's the new one. No, thank you for inviting me. So uh, yeah, as usual, we were the Linux lads. Uh, so uh, I was Shane. I've been Connor, and I've been Mike, and I've been Adam. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye.